His next few videos are going to look at some general trends on the periodic table. For most of these trends, there is a trend going down a group and going across a period. And of all the trends, this first one, the trend with atomic radius, is probably the most important. Now, if you grasp this concept, you can kind of figure out all the other trends. And by atomic radius, we're looking at the size or the volume of an atom. So if I think about atoms being somewhat round, that's like the atomic radius. So that measure the size of the atom. As we go down a group, the atomic radius increases for a few reasons. Here's the main reason. We know that going down a group, the energy level increases when we were doing electron configurations. We said like hydrogen is in the first energy level, lithium is in the second, sodium is in the third. Well, think about that, what that might look like. You'd have a positive nucleus, and then we'd have the first energy level, second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. But each time you go down a group, the electrons are filling a higher energy level. So just naturally, they'll be further from the nucleus, creating a larger atom. Okay, so let's say I have this electron way out here. He's in the fifth energy level, big atom. Another thing that affects the size of an atom is the relationship between the attraction of the nucleus and the electrons. The stronger the attraction between the nucleus and the electrons, the smaller the atom. Think about it as two highly attracted magnets. If the attraction is weak between the electrons and the nucleus, then the atom swells a little and the radius would increase. Well, there's something called the shielding effect. And whoever came up with this name, it's brilliant, because it makes sense. The shielding effect is when you have a large atom that has lots of electrons. And so you have all these inner electrons. So we'll draw some electrons in here. We'll just randomly scatter electrons. Electron, electron, electron. They're all over the place. These inner electrons form a shield and they block the attraction between the nucleus and the outermost electrons. So this attractive force is very weak. Weak attraction between the nucleus and the highest energy electrons. And it is like the inner electrons form a shield. So they block that attractive force. So if the attraction is weak between the nucleus and the electron, the atom swells a little bit. And it's, I mean, it's already a big atom because it's got lots of electrons and lots of energy levels, but it's even a little larger than what you might expect. So the shielding effect is the second reason why atoms are real large as you get down toward the bottom of the periodic table. Lots of energy levels and a weak attractive force between the nucleus and the outermost electrons. Now everybody usually gets that trend right. It makes sense. The trend going across a period is maybe not so obvious. For example, let's pick a group of elements that go across a period. Uh, how about like the top of the P block? Let's look at boron, element five. Carbon is number six. Carbon, element six. Nitrogen is element number seven. Oxygen is number eight. Fluorine is number nine. And then finally, we would have Neon, number 10. Okay, so here's a group of elements going across a period. So we know that the atomic number increases. So what does that mean? Well, boron would start with five protons and five electrons. And then as you go across, you're just adding a proton, adding an electron. So by the time I get to Neon, 
I have 10 protons and 10 negative electrons. Okay, well, a couple things to think about. Uh, number one, again, think about this as a magnet. Which is going to be a stronger attraction? Five positives and negatives or ten positives and negatives? And then I think most people would agree that it's probably the ten. This is a stronger attraction. A stronger attractive force. Which, if I have a stronger attractive force between the nucleus and the electrons, I guess it makes sense then that the atomic radius will decrease going across a period. The atoms get smaller going across. The attraction between the nucleus and the electrons increases. We say there's an increase in nuclear charge, which just means that the nucleus is becoming more positive. So it's going to have a stronger attraction for his electrons. The stronger that attractive force, the tighter everything is held together, the atoms get smaller. Now sometimes people will have a hard time with this because they're saying, how can neon atoms be smaller than boron? There's more stuff in a neon atom. There's double the protons, double the electrons, there's probably about double the neutrons. So if there's more particles, wouldn't you think that it should be a bigger atom? Valid concern. But remember we said that most of the volume, the space that an atom takes up, is the electron cloud. So they're not incorrect. Yes, this would be a bigger nucleus in the neon atom. The nucleus will be twice as big. But the nucleus is like the size of a marble in the middle of a football stadium. Most of the space is the electron cloud. So the fact that the nucleus is bigger really doesn't affect the radius or the size of the atom. And yes, the neon atom would weigh more. Its atomic mass is larger. But again, most of the mass is in the nucleus. It's the electron cloud that determines the radius or the size of the atom. Now the other thing that we should mention too, as we go across a period from boron to neon, we are not adding an energy level. As we go across, we are just filling. In this case, the two p orbitals. We're just filling the second energy level. I'll put that down. We're filling the second, in this case, the second energy level. Specifically, the two p orbitals in this example. Now this will follow suit for the entire periodic table. As you go across, you're not adding an energy level. You add an energy level going down a group. Going across, you're just filling the existing energy level. So yes, I'm adding more electrons, but they're all going in to the second energy level. So on average, they're about the same distance from the nucleus. But it's that increased nuclear charge then that causes the atom to shrink a little bit as I go across a period. The more positively charged nucleus we have, the stronger the attraction it'll show for its electrons. That results in a smaller radius. So to summarize, if I look at a periodic table, we want to know the extremes. If atoms get larger toward the bottom, but smaller going across, francium has the largest radius on the entire periodic table. So the small atoms are on the top and they get even smaller going across. So kitty corner, helium is the smallest. And again, we're talking smallest radius. Hydrogen has the smallest mass. 
but helium's radius is smaller. Hydrogen only has one proton and one electron. Helium has two protons and two electrons. That's a stronger attractive force. And so now as I work kitty corner from helium down to francium, the atoms get bigger. So what they might do on a test question is say, um, I have elements on a periodic table. Let's go um, maybe strontium. And then let's say we have copper and oxygen. They might give you three elements on the periodic table. And they might say, which has the largest radius? Which has the smallest radius? Or maybe they say, rank these elements in order of increasing atomic radius. Well, all of the atoms close to francium are big, and all of the atoms close to helium are small. So let's say we want to rank them in order of increasing radius. The smallest is going to be in the upper right-hand corner. So we'd say oxygen is the smallest, then would be copper, and then strontium. Oh, that's not so bad. Know the extremes. And from there you can rationalize the other trends on the periodic table. Now we can also graph atomic radius and see if this really makes sense. The atomic radius here is uh, measured in units of picometers. PMs, picometers, tiny fractions of a meter. Well, let's see, does this make sense? Going down a group, the radius should increase. Yeah, it does. Here's hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, and so on. Yeah, going down a group, the radius increases significantly. Now, going across, sometimes the trend isn't quite as drastic. As I go across from group 1 to group 2, and so on, until I finally hit group 18, the noble gases, there is a general decrease in atomic radius. And again, sometimes when you get over in that P block, it's not quite as drastic. Because then we're really just looking at an increase in attractive force from the positive nucleus. But the general trend follows going across that the radius shows a general decrease going across the periodic table. If you can understand this trend in radius, you can figure out all the rest of them. This is by far my favorite and the most important.